Howdy, welcome to Jank Brews. Today we've got a pretty janky brew <clears throat> that we're calling Bant Rebirth, uh, focused on a bunch of legends uh, in the form of Titania, Slogurk, Shauna. We've got a Malcolm in here, we've got Rona. Uh, so let's get into it. This deck uh, most often wins, if it, if it gets there at all, uh, via Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. We've got three copies of Titania, Voice of Gaia in the deck, which uh, pairs well with a handful of the things we're trying to do. Um, it's a 3-4, four, 4-3 four, with reach, and whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, we gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia, and a land named Argos, Sanctum of Nature, exile then meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. So what we want to have is a whole bunch of lands in our graveyard, uh, with Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, on the battlefield. And uh, yeah, turn Titania into Gaia Incarnate and Bash for the win. Uh, there's a couple of cards we, we could, and in fact I, I've toyed with playing in uh, variations of this deck. There's the Tortoise that dumps lands into the graveyard and lets you bring one back. Uh, arguably that's better than Shauna, um, but I have some curiosity about Shauna and... Yeah, I don't know. This is Jank Brew, so sometimes we play suboptimal cards for the exploratory value. Um, but you may want to consider that guy. Uh, you also may want to consider Sarah Paragon in that it can replay any of these guys from the yard. Um, so we're going to do a lot of self-mill, a lot of draw and discard, but we'll, we'll run through the rest of the creatures first. So we have a pair of Aether Channelers. This is another card that could arguably something be something else, but it's been interesting this far. Uh, I, I like this card. It's sort of a pet card of mine. Um, gives us options. Uh, it's a 2-1 that can bounce any non-land permanent, which is convenient. Draw a card or create a bird token, which we'd often be using as a chump blocker. We've got Slogurk, the Overslime. Uh, Slogurk is a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Trample. When a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Slogurk, the Overslime. Remove 3, return it to its owner's hand. And Slogurk leaves the battlefield, return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. So this is uh, just as convenient a way um, as the Tortoise to get uh, an Argoth back in play if we happen to have dumped it into the graveyard. It also lets us uh, get back Beseju, Odawara, Soaring City, and Iganjo if we've used them uh, for their, their channel abilities. And... Yeah, sometimes it can just get big. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the ways that we can, at instant speed, put a bunch of lands in the graveyard and Grom. Um, we've got uh, two copies of Shauna Purifying Blade. Um, a lot of our abilities, uh, either triggered abilities or, or spells that we cast, uh, gain us a little bit of life, even some of our lands. Uh, so being able to get a bit of card advantage off of Shauna, I think, is interesting. Perhaps should be something else, but it works well with our Cosmic Rebirth, which we'll touch on in just a minute, <clears throat> in that we can target it if we need to. Uh, and Cosmic Rebirth, of course, also gains some life. So uh, Shauna is a 3-3 three, three life linker for 3 at the beginning of your end step. You can pay X if you do draw X cards. X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn. Um, we'll touch then on Malcolm, a luring scoundrel. This guy's got flash. He's a 2-1. He also lets us loot, uh, draw a discard when he uh, connects with an opponent. Um, draw a discard. If there are four or more chorus counters on Malcolm, you may cast the discarded card without paying its mana cost. Pretty uncommon that we're going to have that happen, but you never know. We've got two copies of Oracle of Tragedy. Uh, I, I sort of not advise cutting this card, uh, even though it may seem a little weaker than some of the alternatives in Legends. Not just because uh, Oracle's not legendary, uh, but because it has a unique uh, combo with Cosmic Rebirth, right? So uh, when it enters the battlefield or dies, you can draw a card, then discard a card, or you can shuffle up to four target mana uh, cards with mana value three or greater from your graveyard into your library. So when testing this deck earlier, um, twice uh, I was milled out. Um, once by a bug combo that just kept recasting um, I don't know, the seven mana uh, black sorcery that mills ten of each player and then dumps it in the grave. So basically th that player milled both of us. Uh, but because I was holding a Cosmic Rebirth, and I'll often be holding a, a late Cosmic Rebirth, this is typically the one thing you don't want to dump into your graveyard if you can, and if you have to, Oracle of Tragedy can get them back. Um, so Cosmic Rebirth uh, allowed me to, at their end step, um, or even in my upkeep, if I didn't have the mana available, I can Cosmic Rebirth the Oracle of Tragedy and put three cards from my graveyard into my deck 
thus preventing me from being milled. In the, in the case of that uh, black sorcery mill, like my opponent just lost the next turn, even though they milled both of us out um, because they didn't have a way to refill their uh, library. Um, also, in the case of just a regular blue-white mill deck, I got milled out. They said GG's. Uh, I was able to replay uh, Oracle of Tragedy, put some cards back in my death deck, and therefore be able to Titania them to death. Uh, so don't recommend cutting Oracle of Tragedy just because it gives you late game plans. Sometimes like games are just going really late. This, this deck doesn't win very easily, very well. Um, so typically the games are long. Uh, we've got two copies of Rona, Herald of Invasion. It, it draws and discards at instant speed. Um, it's legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. Happens reasonably often when you got Malcolm and Titania and Slogurk and Shauna. Uh, so worthy of a couple slots there, I think. Um, I would cut this before I'd cut Oracle of Tragedy. Then uh, we'll move on to the sort of namesake card in Rebirth. Uh, Cosmic Rebirth is an instant for three. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard. If that if it has mana value three or less, you can put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put it on the battlefield, put it into your hand. You gain three life. Obviously, this is a pretty cool cop, uh, combo with Shauna. You have to do this on your turn if you want to uh, gain the, the life uh, on your turn and thereby at the beginning of your end step be able to draw some cards but sometimes that's totally fine if you just want to like I don't know put three more cards in your hand if you've got six mana which is very common if you don't die in the early stage um, so Cosmic Rebirth is really what we, what we want to be doing here and in order to set up Cosmic Rebirth we play four copies of Faithful Mending great thing to just dump into your yard with other Faithful Mendings or with draw and discard abilities um, and gain us a little bit of life. So again, with Shauna in play, the Faithful Mending could easily, with two extra mana, draw two cards. And um, we've got full four copies of Otherworldly Gaze. Both of these cards, it's also worth noting, um, let us find our Argoths, uh, let us dump lands at instant speed to Slogurk, uh, and really just set up our combos with Cosmic Rebirth. In a perfect world, what we want to be doing is at the end of our opponent's turn, uh, flash in a Titania where we have everything set up and then bam, they get hit for 15 uh, when they weren't expecting it. So other than that, we're playing four copies of Confounding Riddle, which is another way of setting up our combos, looking for the cards that we want, filling our graveyard with the things that we want to have there. Um, and it, it's also like a nice little counter spell for big things we can't otherwise deal with. Um, and we generally, uh, we don't play any removal other than Depopulates, might seem a little counterintuitive considering we'd be blowing up our own stuff, but we're blowing up our own stuff all the time anyway. So if, if, our, if their graveyard's full of creatures and our graveyard's full of creatures, usually we're in better shape because we have combos to pull off with that. And unless we're playing against a reanimator deck, usually they don't. Um, so if we can if we can resolve a depopulate against you know these uh, war leaders call decks or uh, any sort of mid range deck. Um, and, and potentially recast them over and over again, because Oracle of Tragedy, uh, sometimes we'll put more of these back in our deck. If we if we need more than three to populate, uh, we'll, we'll find ways to get them back. The mana for this deck is super janky. We've, we've got three copies of Argoth and a three-color deck, which comes into play tapped unless we have a green uh, a legendary creature, um, which we don't have terribly often. <laughs> I think we're playing eight total copies of that. Um, we've got two planes, two islands, and a forest. All of those intended to be hit off of Broker's Hideout because Broker's Hideout works well with Titania. It lets us uh, gain a life and draw a card. Uh, well, works well with Slogurk um, in that it triggers when it enters the graveyard. Uh, most of the rest of this is just uh, uh, dual lands. And it's questionable whether we should be playing any of the fast lands. Um, I think... Uh, Arguably, we should be playing none of them. Um, I haven't really done the math on these, but currently we're playing three fast lands. I think Razor Verge Thicket and Seacrum Coast. We've got two pairs, of, or two two copies of Restless Mindstalk, uh, and two copies of Restless Anchorage. These are great cards to like bring back off of Slowgurk. Um, it's fine if they die because again, Slowgurk can bring them back. Um, but they're good at bashing a little bit of points of damage um, when the opponent's not expecting it. In a perfect world, you want to get your opponent down to like I don't know. 12 or so, so you have the opportunity to just Titania them in one fell swoop. Um, Titania can get really big later in the game, like, you know, 15, 16, 17, but um, in most cases, when we're flipping her, she's in that, you know, 10, 10, 12, 12 range, so uh, that's a pretty long um, deck tech, but this is a pretty janky deck. I think it needs a bit of explanation, so let's see how many games we can get through here. So 
this isn't the worst hand, as long as we don't die on turn three. <clears throat> um, and it doesn't look like we would die on turn three thanks to an Aether Channeler. We should be able to bounce or put up some chump blockers if needed. Which I'd rather. I think probably just rather start with Sparrow's headquarters. Trepid adversary. Interesting. I feel like that's probably a good sign for us. So here is a here's a fast land. Um, I don't know that I. I think I'm gonna just run out restless anchorage. I don't think I'm especially wanting to cast anything here. I'd rather cast faithful mending after slow gurks in play, and I may not cast slow gurk at all until turn four. Uh, or after turn four, if we end up just depopping the board, depending on. Okay, so we've got a war leader's call. <clears throat> um, we could aether channel, or just buy a little time here and just bounce that dude. Uh, we could also play Sklogurk and let him die. Um, we could also besage you the war, war leader's call. Um, I'm not sure which ones I want to do, but we're going to go ahead and play Razor Verge Thicket regardless here. Uh, we, we could force them to just burn a turn on War Leader's Call, which might be worth doing. Or we could just Besage you it. Hmm. Let's Besage you it, considering we have Slow Gurk and we want to get that combo running. This deck will often present you with like a whole lot of options. <laughs> Trepid Adversary. Uh, okay, I think we're, we'll probably... So, well, I think I want him to pay first. No, I don't. I'd rather him play a three drop. The extra land that they get. Rather than play a, well, unless it's another War Leader's Call, but I'd rather than play, I don't know, some three mana creature that we can wipe away with Depopulate. Probably pay for it anyway here. Yep, they pay for it anyway, but at least we gave them that option. Assuming they had the three drops. So their life total is getting high, which is bad for us. But uh, we should be able to make some pretty substantial headway from here. <clears throat> we'll be able to gain some life from Faithful Mending. We'll very likely be able to dump a card into the yard uh, with Slow Gurk to make it a 4-4. Sanguine Evangelist. Yeah, so there's a Rebirth too. Um, nothing to Rebirth yet. Uh, so we're going to play Slow Gurk. Hold up, Faithful Mending. <clears throat> They've got to attack with Sanguine Evangelist to get the ability. If they happen to have a way to remove Slogurk, I don't know that we care that much. Geological Appraiser is a good card for them here. Okay, we got Adeline. Ooh, Adeline's really good for them. Now I wish I had that uh, Depopulate back. Let's see what happens here. You see, I guess they could just bash with that. Get a dude. We will block the dude. Um, and then we're gonna faithfully mend. Okay, so I think the play army wants to just uh, bounce their Adeline with Aether Channel, or maybe even after they attack the next turn. So I think I'm going to dump this, and like, <clears throat> Rona doesn't feel the greatest. Although I, I could, you know, very soon I could uh, transform Rona. Um, th that 5-5 five five isn't going to be the greatest without them having spells in hand to cast, but <clears throat> I want to have an extra land, because I want to have 6 mana available for this turn. We got an Argoth anyway, which is better. Uh, we have the mana, yeah, we have the right amount of mana either way. Getting to the point where if we faithfully mended into Titania, uh, we'd be in pretty good shape. Um, but in this case, I think we're going to just Aether Channeler the Adeline.
Hmm. Nailing it with these geological appraisers. Same one, Evangelist. We're definitely going to have to find another to populate really soon. <clears throat> Especially considering they can play this Adeline too. So if they attack with anything that Aether Channeler can block, we're probably blocking. Maybe we'll eat that Geological Appraiser if they bash with that. So we could get back a Rona. Feels pretty bad. We would be able to eat a Sanguine Evangelist. But I think we're going to Faithfully Mend just to see what our options are first. Um, Oracle of Tragedy would allow us to put the... Um, Board wipe back in our deck, but it's probably a little late for that. So I think we're going to dump both of these. We'll pump Slow Gurk as a result. <clears throat> now Slow Gurk can at least block this Geological Appraiser. Uh, yeah, we'll take four here. We can also now bounce their stuff at instant speed with Aether Channeler. Okay, so there's the Titania. We, we're one land short in the bin. Um, and I don't think we have any means by which to solve for that other than Argoth, which is too slow for us right here. Now we could play Titania and, and bring something else back. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to do. We might end up making like a bird, even. Can't think of a way to buy our upkeep you, you don't get a chance like once once you can't put a stop on your upkeep and then rebirth the titania back it has to be there at the beginning of your upkeep so you got to do it by the end of their turn um and in this case i think we're doing nothing <clears throat> just hoping to survive uh find some way to dump one more land into the bin okay they're drawing really well for for someone uh, who got a lot of lands this is going to be tough we might actually just die here Okay, so part of me wants to put the Adeline back in their hand before they attack, uh, or, or put the Intrepid Adversary back in hand before they attack. Um, that's annoying because they just get it back the next turn, but I think otherwise we just die. So let's do that. Let's get the Aether Channeler. Put it in play. We will... Return this Intrepid Adversary to hand. Only gives us a turn to do something. I mean, I, I guess we can block with Aether Channel and potentially do that again next turn, but we're, we're playing a losing game here, as it were. <laughs> uh, and we don't want to put any uh, lands back into our hand because we need, um, we need them in the bin for... to... Three of these, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Probably got a block here. And then just not put the cards back in our hand. You can always bring Slogurk back if we need it. We're probably just bringing back Aether Channeler. Uh, getting too close to being dead here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to bring any of those back because nothing really to hit with them, so we're going to leave them in the bin. Okay, Otherworldly Gaze is kind of good here um, because it can allow us to put, put something in the graveyard. We can Cosmic Rebirth, like an Aether Channeler or a Slow Gurk, um, and then we really just want to put some cards in the bin. So we can Titania them next turn. Unfortunately, we're like probably like too far away from killing them to Titania them and win. Uh, but we'll do the best we can. Fortunately, Titania will gain us some life. Cosmic Rebirth will gain us some life. If they just if, if they go all in on Intrepid Adversary again, we at least get like a turn. Yeah, and so this is this is good for them. Um, they should you know pay all the mana out for this.
Oh, it, did, it didn't do them any favors. Oh, I guess they, they didn't have enough red or enough white. So, um, yeah, I probably just let them swing all out here so I can eat the two ground guys. And hopefully they swing out and we can eat the ground guys. Okay, so I think the first play is Rebirth. Bounce the adversary. I don't, I don't have too many choices other than that. Um, yeah, maybe maybe we otherworldly gaze first. When we only have... Well, let's see. Let's otherworldly gaze first. Um, so we do like Ganjo. It's kind of interesting. Um, Broker's Hideout, I definitely want in there. The otherworldly gaze, I definitely want in there. At Ganjo, I think I also just definitely want in there right now. Um, maybe I want to draw this? I don't know. Well, no, we just, every we want everything in the yard, because Tanya's going to get them all back anyway. <laughs> um, so now we will rebirth the Aether Channeler. Put it on the battlefield. Uh, return non-land permanent to their owner's hand. Uh... And then we're going to Otherworldly Gaze before we decide whether we're blocking. These can all go in the bin. I feel like Aether Channeler would be a fine card to draw next turn. I don't know. Yeah, because it can make a little flyer anyway. It's probably as good as we're going to get. We get a draw. Gain a little life. Eat both of these dudes. Seven. Still pretty darn close to dead, honestly. And, and Titania no longer gains us any life, so there's that. Oh, and I guess as a result of that, we, we're not drawing what we thought we would draw. We do have a blocker in the form of this flying dude, uh, our, our land, anyway. Um, so we just bash. It's going to take us too many turns, I think, to get get where we're going. Um, and let's see, because there's so many of those, we might we might just be dead. <laughs> we needed to put one of them back in their hand. Or like bounce one. And they can see that we're empty handed, so should be GG's for us. Does that have reach? He does have reach. We're not actually dead. Uh, okay, so we'll block here, block here. <clears throat> uh, two blocks, uh, and then we'll cast Otherworldly Gaze just to see what we can draw. Having another Titania is not the greatest. Slow Gurk doesn't help us a ton here. Aether Channeler at least gives us a blocker. So it's probably going to be this play. Or two. Mm, anything we can do here? Seiju? No, nothing, nothing of use here. So we probably just bounce a dude. Hmm. Or make a flyer. Let's see if they block. So that would make things really easy. I think we're just dead, though. I might, I might just have to draw a card if they don't block. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should have forced them to block. By putting, yeah, I, I probably made a play mistake there. If I if I had forced them to block one two three four, cost to do that one two three yeah I could have done it twice. Forced them to block one of them to not die, <clears throat> and then uh might still be dead on board. <laughs> It'd have been close, but 
Let's see. If we draw here... I'm not sure even we can hit, but we probably just have to draw. Because if we, if, we, if we bounce that guy, we're still dead. If we make a token, we're still dead. Uh, so we gotta draw. Confounding Riddle... Um, probably doesn't help, but let's try it. We can hit a board wipe. Faithful Mending maybe also isn't the worst. Uh, we can, in fact, cast it twice. Um, and we can get this one from the bin first. I think we're still exactly dead, unless we can find some other way to gain some life. Uh, Broker's Hideout would allow us to gain some life, but it's not going to let us also cast the Faithful Mending again. So we probably have to dump both of these two. Again, it's unfortunate that Titania, once she's flipped, doesn't do that. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, we have died. I killed that thing anyway. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, well, so close. Uh, if we'd made it to the next turn, we'd have survived. I think I made an error enough that we might have gotten there without said error. Let's go back for a janky game too. Okay, this is a pretty awful hand, not having any blue mana sources. So we're gonna mull it. Definitely better. Um, I think in this case, uh, I'm not even sure. I'm gonna put back out Awara. We'll, we'll probably dump Shauna and something else. We have a couple of enablers, unless we need Confounding Riddle to not die. Okay, not a bad draw. And a fix. Against black, I may want to just run out Shauna. Uh, especially since we have another one here. Um, so we'll we'll see. If I can get him to use uh, counter spells or removal on like on early creatures, we're usually plenty happy with that. Hmm, okay. Didn't really expect Jace there. Nothing we can do about it. Let's see what they do. I've already read your thoughts. You won't stop. Okay, they're milling for us. Interesting. Got two confounding riddles. That's a great mill for them. Yeah, we're gonna hold on for right now. Um We're gonna play this at Ganjo. And we're gonna play Shauna. I think it's reasonable to consider they remove, but they might just Plus Jace on it, so in theory it doesn't do anything, but if they do that, Broker's Hideout will allow us to draw a card next turn. Shieldred would be bad for us. Cut down. Um, so we can Broker's Hideout and Shauna, kind of missing the opportunity to draw off Shauna. But I think we, we probably just need to do that.
our opponent is thinking about whether they want to allow us to sacrifice Broker's Hideout. Get a green source here. Um, and I think again we just run out Shauna. I guess we we could we did Cosmic Rebirth for the Shauna that they killed. Um, or I hate I'd hate to see them counterspell that. Uh, but I might do it anyway, just because if it happens to work out, <clears throat> Shauna being able to ping off Jace would be nice. If they let us untap, we would have Confounding Riddle. It also gives us the opportunity to Confounding Riddle a. Uh, I don't know, a shield red or some, some sort of especially annoying card they might have. I would probably confounding riddle a um, Soren or Opponent is pretty uncertain, it seems, what to do with all that mana and that Jace. It's cool, fancy Jace. Sounds tough. X cards. I mean, look and play those cards for as long as they're mana. Cast spells when you spend mana. There. So this sort of this gives them three cards. Um, three of our cards. I mean, I don't know how much I care about that. I might just let that resolve. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, where did the other cards go? Hmm. Well, we're going to rebirth our Shauna. This is actually really convenient <clears throat> um, that they happen to play it this way. Because we'll be able to bash with Shauna. We're going to play this as a land. We're going to remove this Jace. Um, we're going to draw two cards. I think, because I'd like to hold up Confounding Riddle. Yeah, those are fine cards, because we could really cast them both if we don't need to Confounding Riddle. Uh, I'd rather not use the other Cosmic Rebirth if I don't have to. For some reason, I like. I thought this card doesn't seem to be like a target opponent. Exiles the top X cards of their library face down. You may look at and play those cards as long as they remain exile. If you cast a spell this way, but like it looks like they only have one. I, I'm not understanding what happened to the others. Maybe this is to represent all of them? Maybe I don't understand how that card works. Iron Crag I think is fine. I don't really care about that. Certainly not going to confounding riddle it. Um, so I think we're going to flash Malcolm here. Maybe I should be protecting Shauna, but I don't know. I don't really care. Um, and since I have the mana, I'm going to Otherworldly Gaze, just see if we can fix what we're looking for. Okay, there's a cut down from Malcolm, totally fine. Thanks for letting me know that you're going to do that before I Otherworldly Gaze. That is, that is useful information for me. Opponent not certain if they want to allow us to otherworldly gaze. 
Maybe they have a way to bounce Shauna. Okay, Cosmic Rebirth I want. I think Slogurk and Titania find their way into the bin. <clears throat> Alright, maybe I'd, I'd kind of be fine with all three of these just having access to them, but... I think, I think we're going to put him in the bin just to give us that flexibility end of turn against this controlling deck. Uh, and, and we'll still have one Cosmic Rebirth available to us, which is cool. Um, part of me wanted to just keep them all there so I could draw them off Shauna, but... I don't know. Yeah, so... I would like to hit, I would like to hit, um, a land if possible. Now, so we're going to faithfully mend. It didn't hit a land. <laughs> That's pretty annoying. We're going to dump the other Shauna and we're going to dump Rona. Uh, I'm not going to play Oracle here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I want to dump Oracle. We have that, that, that'll set the loop up, as long as they don't know what it is, but... Kind of annoying that we didn't hit land. I want to keep Confounding Riddle up. So, we're going to end the turn, and we're going to... Well, jeez. Can't keep Confounding Riddle up. So, we're just going to draw three. Go to seven. Yep, we got to those lands, but it was definitely late. I don't know if I mentioned it in the uh, uh, deck tech, but we're on 26 lands. They play Confounding Riddle. Nice. This could be an opportunity for them to set up uh, a mill. Uh, looks like they didn't get it, but... I would not be surprised if that's what we're playing in. So there's our Restless Vine Stalk. Okay, so they are being able to play these cards from... Maybe that's why we didn't have any lands. Because they've got them all. <laughs> I'll take note of all your failures. Yeah, getting Shauna there is a little annoying. Okay, so now we have Oracle. We've got Rona. Um, I think I want to get to the point where we just have three and three available to us. Um, Rona does at least present another threat. I think we're going to play Rona. Oof, I don't know. Rona represents another, we don't need a lot of cards right now. So Rona represents another threat. Um, I think we're going to play Broker's Hideout. Not going to draw a card off Shauna. Still a lot of white available to us, so... Rather just hold up. Rebirth and Riddle. Might consider rebirthing a Slogurk here. Depending on what they do. Deadly cover up. Serial creatures. Um they did collect evidence. Um let's see, Serial Creatures. Evidence exile a card from an opponent's graveyard, then search its owner's graveyard hand library for any number of cards. I don't, I don't know what they would go for here, but I'd kind of rather not find out. So we're going to try to Confounding Riddle. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if they Confounding Riddle us back, but they didn't. So that's fine. The, the other thought was, like, have them target the card in my yard and then Cosmic Rebirth in response. But I didn't. If they had a counter spell, I'd rather they counter that than counter my Cosmic Rebirth. Okay, so there's a restless fine stock. We've got three and three here. Uh, we could flip Rona and go Bashin. Um, I don't. 
Let's see, and if we did that, yeah, there's not much else we can do. So we're gonna we're gonna go that route. <laughs> yeah. Part of me wants to go straight for them, but. I'm not sure if it's right or wrong. So we can at least otherworldly gaze if we wanna. Putting the opponent to 10 wouldn't have been the worst in the world, but having a Jace at like seven gets a little scary. E even though we do have Cosmic Rebirth into Oracle of Tragedy, you need to make sure we have an Oracle in here. Yeah, we do. <clears throat> but if that Cosmic Rebirth were to get, okay, Deadly Cover Up. So here's where it goes again. And now we're gonna let him do it. Um, but because one, we don't really have a choice. And two, I'm just curious what they go for. Like, are they going for um, Titania? Because like right now we're pretty far away from T Titania activation. Oh, and then get any card, exile a card from opponent, opponent's graveyard. Let's see what they targeted. Okay, they're getting faithful mending. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it's not it's not a terrible decision, I suppose. They know we have the cosmic rebirths now, which is a little annoying. Um. This thing has Death Touch? Yeah, Death Touch is annoying too, because um, that means Restless Vine stock. Okay, they're going. They're attacking. Okay. They're milling us too. That definitely puts Titania way more online. Um, we just got to figure out how to... Okay, so there's the Argoth. Sure. Become subdued. Let's see what uh, fixing a draw. I mean, like I'll just play it to Tanya. You no, know? um, I don't know if I want Depop in the graveyard. I don't know. It's not going to do me a ton of good out here. Actually, I probably don't want that card at all in this game. Um, but Titania into Slowgurk is fine. I mean, they've got to deal with Titania, or they get nailed pretty good. Well, no, they don't because we don't have we don't have the land we're looking for yet. Um, but there are plenty of ways we could get it. Uh, in fact, I probably should have otherworldly gaze there. But this deck is again it it always presents a a bunch of options. Kind of want an oracle of tragedy and get back. Confounding Riddles and a Cosmic Rebirth. Yeah, since they know what we have, I think that's the play. Shuffle up to four cards. We'll get Confounding Riddle, Confounding Riddle, uh, Cosmic Rebirth. Hmm, I thought we knew we had a slow Gurk on top. Did we do something? I don't know. <laughs> we put it on the bottom. We didn't put it in the yard. Target player mills three cards. Okay. Okay, there was a slow Gurk on top. I don't know why I wasn't showing it to us, but... So I made slow Gurk... Uh, depending on what they do here, I made slow Gurk at the end of turn... And value three or less. Sure. Slogurk can get pretty out of hand sometimes too. Restless Reef. Okay, we're running low on cards to the point where we may need to use these cosmic rebirths to just to not get milled. Problem with this deck uh, consistently milling us with Restless Reef, for example, is that we have to use a Cosmic Rebirth basically every turn. <laughs> yeah, there's another Argoth. No blocks. All 
All right, well, let's do it. We're going to target a slow Gurk. Getting to the point where if we can get an Argoth, which, which like if they allow this to resolve, now anytime slow Gurk gets, leaves the battlefield, we're going to get that Argoth back, which is dope. Um, but we're running low on cards and we're running low on Cosmic Rebirths. I would really wish I had another Cosmic Rebirth in hand. Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna bash. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could hmm. I could fire up restless vine stock. One, two, three, four, five, six, and still have enough for a cosmic rebirth if they milled us out. Uh, that might be the play here. We're going to try it. And we're going to assume that they don't understand the combo <clears throat> and aren't going to be too worried about Sure, Oracle can get 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Yep, we have a 1-1. One, one. Can't block. Okay. There's Dream Root Castle. If they Jace... I guess I'm kind of hoping they Jace plus fire up Restless Reef. Because if they do... Mm, okay, well that's annoying. Now we don't have a very convenient means of winning. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I wish the I wish the lands went back into play, because if we had if we got Argoth, uh let's see. Just get both Argoths. Just in case. Oh, okay, maybe in a Ottawara. Argoth, Ottawara, and get a broker's hideout just in case. That can hit that can hit the yard and make our dude a little bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten mana available. I think okay, so here's a Jace. I'm assuming they probably Oh, okay, so they have it. If, you, if they go full mill here, which is what I'm hoping they do, I'm hoping they just minus five and go to attack us with Restless Reef. Um, yeah, so this will allow us to decide pretty explicitly what remains in our deck. And it also mean that they don't have any blockers. Hmm, okay, maybe they're savvy, uh, because they, they didn't force us to draw the last card. Uh, or they just have a counterspell, in which case, um, I'm... Let's see, have we seen any counterspells other than... Uh, I know I've seen... I thought we saw... Our own counterspell against them. Well, we're going to draw this last card. Okay, so it's a Cosmic Rebirth, which is convenient. Um, so I think we play Argoth. Oh, shit. I forgot we didn't have a dude in play. So I wonder if they were leaving this up to block the Vine Stalk. I'm not sure, but I think I'm not doing anything. I, 
I may actually bash, see if they block. Because if they don't... Like, I don't care about getting milled anymore. I just care that the rebirth uh, resolves. And I won't have to worry about that as much if they block and kill the Oracle of Tragedy. Because when the Oracle of Tragedy dies, it will allow me to put cards on top of my deck. Okay. And that gives me two targets for the combo of bringing dudes back. Yep. Or putting stuff back in my library. Yep, so we're going to shuffle up to three cards. Um, may as well just get, like, which Tanya is no good here. So, uh, I mean, so Titania, Aether Channeler, um, Cosmic Rebirth are the cards I want on top of my library. Yep. So they'll mill us out. All those cards right back in the bin. <laughs> uh, yep. Interestingly, If they don't have counter spells, so we're gonna start by targeting um, Oracle because we have to. Uh, without Oracle, we're dead. <clears throat> um, does it dissipate? Yep. And we're just gonna hope. Well, they, they, I don't think they can have another dissipate. But this is un unfortunate because now we don't quite have lethal. We can give it a one or something like that. So, uh, so we'll get Oracle. Uh, this is the Murex lets them have put it on the battlefield. Yep. Uh, shuffle up to four target cards. So in this case, we just want Cosmic Rebirths because we we really have to draw Cosmic Rebirth. We have another Cosmic Rebirth. Uh, one of them. Oh no, we don't. That's kind of annoying. Uh, but Aether Channeler can allow us to definitely get another Cosmic Rebirth. So, with these three cards, unless they do some milling action right now, we will be guaranteed a Cosmic Rebirth, which allows us to keep this cycle going. We're 54 minutes in, and we just have a deck tech and almost two games. How close is our opponent to getting milled out? 32, not close. Okay, so there's, unfortunately, there's the Aether Channeler. Uh, so we're gonna have to play it to draw. Um, which means, do we have enough to bash bash? Because right now, if they don't have anything, they're dead. Um, but we, man, we don't quite have enough. Well, we could do it on the beginning of our upkeep. So let's see. We draw. We draw here. This is probably bad sequencing, but. Draw a card. And now we have a Cosmic Rebirth, and we cannot quite Cosmic Rebirth and attack. Uh, but we're going to attack, I think. I'm going to force the issue. We, we can technically Cosmic Rebirth on our own upkeep. 
And they, if they happen to have nothing here, I don't know what those last two cards are, but like... We could just win. We'll take it. One and one. I don't know that we're getting to seven games with uh, Shauna, Shauna dot deck or Titania dot deck or Slogurk dot deck or Bant Rebirth, but that was a cool example of uh, what we talked about loop wise in the deck tech. Uh, that it's hard for a mill deck to beat you if you can keep that loop alive. Cranium. The Fibble Flip? Fibble Flip? Icon? Um, not the greatest. Uh, would prefer on the play. We're going to keep it so we can at least get all three colors of mana and we have a bunch of enablers going on here. If we don't die early, this may be a, an opportunity for us to Titania early. Medium with Spirits. I don't know how good we are against this deck. Uh, arguably pretty bad if they're able to get the, uh, the, the trample grow guy uh, in the yard. Really hate that dude too. Holy cow. We're going to get blue. We can gain a lot of life, but they can just... This deck can go crazy so fast and swing for boatloads. Um, so we need very probably... Uh, board wipes. I think I'm gonna throw this out. Some draw a discard. Hmm. Do I want to just draw a discard with faithful mending or flash and a Malcolm? Again, so many options with this deck. It's hard to know which ones are optimal, unless you've played this a, a million times, perhaps. But usually, I want to save faithful mending for. Being able to trigger other stuff off of it. So I'm, I'm going to throw this out. I have two copies of it anyway. We're going to draw and then discard. Um, and I think in this case, we're going to dump the other Oracle from Malcolm. Hmm. Let's sub the other Oracle. Alex is very bad for us. Especially if they like uh, put the ranker looking thing. Okay, jeez, or that. So we're probably not even blocking here. <laughs> because I don't I, I need I gotta have a blocker for Calyx next turn. Um because that dude copies things. And here, here's a question of like, do, do I really want these fast lands? And right now the answer is very clearly no, I do not want these fast lands. Uh, Titania is not going to do us a whole lot of good. Um, so I guess I leave up, I don't know. Maybe I should have played Titania there just so we could potentially start gaining some uh, life off of the landfall triggers or the land hitting the yard tr triggers. I don't know. This is certainly not looking good for us. How many of transients are definitely bad, even if we hit our, uh, so maybe, maybe well, if having it in the yard is pretty abysmal regardless. So even our, our um, they have another Reign of Truth? Ossification? Okay, I, I might confounding riddle the ossification. Does this say whenever, no, no. enters the battlefield? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to confounding riddle this ossification. <clears throat> Definitely not what we want to be doing with Confounding Riddle, but I don't think we have a choice there. Bash Bash, Snap Block, Calyx. So we can't make copies of things. We'll go to seven. Uh, we're really quickly going to have to hit something. Now Razor Rouge Thicket doesn't come into play untapped. So I definitely should have played this last turn. 
uh, just to have more and better options. Um, hmm. Because right now the only thing I can even bring back is an Oracle of Tragedy, which isn't very exciting. And we're, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to hit a board wipe like real quick. We can probably well we'll see if we can survive here or not. As of right now, we can survive. As of right now, we we perhaps can't survive. Well, we'll we'll see. Um, because I mean, it, it's not a good look, but we can arguably survive. Uh, cosmic rebirthing, a tr an oracle, and then man, we really have to hit uh, board wipe. So cosmic rebirth. We don't technically have to. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we do. I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, we got a Cosmic Rebirth, this Oracle. We've got a Drawn Discard. That's not getting us where we want to go. Uh, I think Malcolm has long since lost its usefulness. Although you could argue that I maybe would rather have Aether Channeler in the bin... So we can, like, flash in an Aether Channeler, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're going to block here and here so we don't die. So, I mean, we're probably dead next turn if we don't draw the board wipe here. Um, okay, so this is cool anyway. Like, we get, we get to draw and discard. Uh when they die, and draw and discard when they die. Okay, so Argoth isn't going to help us. Uh, Faithful Mending is kind of too little too late even here. Let's just something the Malcolm. Uh, Faithful Mending, definitely don't need a second one. Ugh, didn't get there. <clears throat> so pretty sure there's no way we can survive here from five. Play Titania into Faithful Mending... Which could gain us up to uh, Oh, we can't even Titania into Faithful Mending. We can rebirth uh Aether Channeler Faithful Mending. Still think it's just not good enough. Um but I don't know. We'll see what they do. Weaver of Harmony. Almost assuredly dead. Assuming they just bash out, because there's nothing in standard that would suggest to them not to do that. Well, let's get an Aether Channeler. Um, we'll return, maybe, <laughs> this guy, let's see, oh, we're still way dead, this guy gives, I don't know, we're, we're definitely dead. Yeah, we, we never even came close. That was rough. I think with a board wipe, we had a solid chance of coming back there. Because uh, we can, with a Kami with the just top decking, we can certainly beat a Kami top decking. Even even with like two cards in hand, because they'd have gotten to draw a card off their multicolored creatures. Um, I think the, a board wipe would have been a pretty easy win for us, even from like five life. Only playing three. I, I, I don't know if three is the right number or not. Obviously, if you're playing four copies of a board wipe and your opponent is on like a control deck, it's not very good. But we have a lot of ways to draw and discard, um, as we saw last game against uh, blue-black control. 
Ugh, here we go with no blue. So when we'll this we will keep. Um, I think I'm gonna dump Rona. Now I might regret that. Yeah, Rona would be a one three would be fine against red. Hmm. I don't know if this is going to matter a ton, but we're probably playing for depopulate. And I don't know how great Ottawa is going to be. We need another white anyway. So let's just go get it now. Yep. Yep. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's possible that being able to flash in Malcolm is useful here. Like if they play the squee or something like that. Yep. Hmm. I don't want to play Malcolm anyway. Might just need it in play to not die. Okay, so there's a Restless Vine stalk. Can't really do anything on this board. Uh, but we do have to play Razor Urge Thicket to be untapped this turn, so we can depop next turn. So, there it is. Certainly just die. Do a bunch of things off the top. This guy's Trample... Somewhat inten like inclined to block anyway, because I know Malcolm's going to die. Gives us less of a chance of dying to whatever's in the dude's hand. There's a lightning strike. We are now at two. If there's nothing else, now we are dead. Looks like we're dead. Yeah. Nothing to be done about that. Well... When we die before our third turn. This deck is not the greatest. Or before our fourth turn. You could argue this deck is not the greatest. Regardless. Uh, but it's janky. And it can be fun if you make it past those early turns. Okay, um, on the play, this seems good. Start here. short I want yet, so we're going to go here. Unfounding riddles, nice to have up. I don't know, I mean, I see two planes and they haven't cast anything yet. It makes me just want to go like, okay, I'm just going to play Titania. <laughs> Maybe they flash in a uh, little one ones, sort of what I'm guessing, but I wouldn't have used a confounding riddle on that. So... 
It's either one ones or virtue. I, I don't know that I would use it on either. Yeah, so there's the one ones. I guess I prefer that to virtue. Less threatening later. We got war leaders call. A sanguine evangelist. Mm -hmm. I might have confounding riddle that. Okay, so there's Argoth. We are terribly far away from being able to do our thing. We could board wipe here even, but we're not gonna. We're probably gonna like draw and discard a bit. Um, it's possible, in fact, that we could confounding riddle into a little one mana spell, otherworldly gaze, uh, and actually get Titania online this turn. Not super likely, but you don't know. And if we end up having to board wipe, we just need to get a little bit closer to having a cosmic rebirth to bring Titania back. Regal Bunicorn. I think Regal Bunicorn is going to be fine, and we're just going to end up board wiping. There's a bash. Yeah. Probably uh, we'll eat the Sanguine Evangelist. And our little, our little dude makes the uh, board wipe a little bit better. Do we faithfully mend? Uh, knowing we can dump Broker's Hideout, but I mean we could also just Broker's Hideout could hit the bin next turn too. So I think I think we're gonna go here. We hit a bunch of lands. Okay, so we did it three lands and otherworldly gaze. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, man. Part of me really still wants to board wipe, or we might just have to board wipe. Uh, but that's that's sort of exactly what we wanted to hit. Uh, my concern is that we might not be able to live another turn. But, yeah, we, we got to go for this, right? Right? Because these, like, I think when all those hit the bin, we're going to gain life from them. Uh, it's one or more. Uh, but then, you know, all we have to do is hit one more here. Uh, and we will... Okay, so yeah, so there's the next one. We're going to get to gain life off of that. And then probably just want a Shauna in hand. Like, it seems fine. Helps us much less likely to die. Yeah, so we're <laughs> pretty rare that we get uh, Titania this early. Um... I don't hate it. I wish there was a way to keep Titania alive after we board wipe, but we'll probably go ahead and play this now. So we have an 8-8. Eight, eight. Gain a little life. We won't be able to play Shauna and draw off of it. Uh, But I see depopulate as maybe a little bit more of just an insurance policy from here. Do we need any particular color of land? Green, blue, whites. I don't know. We'll get a green because it works with Argoth, maybe. Uh, okay. So we'll bash here. And Regal Bunnycorn could easily become as big as Titania real quick. So here's Resolute Reinforcement. Sure. Um... I think we can't die, because if they play anything that would kill us, we could Confounding Riddle and prevent it, like War Leader's Call. Um, what's more likely is... Oh, maybe they maybe they trade up? Okay. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Um, we can't put any more lands in play. So this is fine for us, really. Uh, in this case, we may actually just play Shauna. We'll see. Yeah. Um, 
Or we could wait a turn and see about board wiping and then playing Shauna. Eh. Yeah, let's wait a turn. Worst case scenario is maybe we take... I'm not even sure what the worst case scenario is. If they, they have two things that could... Like two Warlier's Call type things. Like, yeah, this. I think we probably just uh, Confounding Riddle that. Yeah, and from here we probably board wipe. Then we just board wipe and play Shauna. Or we board wipe and, and like, flash in Malcolm. Because then we could faithfully men next turn and, like, draw cards off of Shauna guaranteed. Whereas we may or may not get the opportunity. Like, if they just play Lightning Strike or something, or, or uh, Helix. You know? You know? Maybe maybe we'll maybe Malcolm will eat a helix. Malcolm does not eat a helix. Uh, probably we bash just to see what's going on here. I'd be a little inclined to discard. Well, I've discard faithful mining. It was a resolute reinforcements. Totally fine. Can't do anything about Malcolm. That's actually good to know. Like maybe I don't want to dump depopulate. It's a great insurance policy. So we're gonna dump faithful mending. Um, we're gonna play Shauna. We're gonna. F Ooh. Ooh. Um. And do I want to just? I think I can probably win from here. With more cards, like just I could just get back at Titania, draw two cards. That's what I'm gonna do. Draw two cards off of Shauna. Yeah, four leaders call is fine. We can definitely beat that from here. Um. Firing up this dude. Yeah. Yeah, we're just firing up this dude. You don't really need to draw any cards off of... We'll dump Otherworldly Gaze, because we can cast it anyway. Oracle of Tragedy we don't really need here. Uh... Still have the depopulate as backup. Yeah, you got some guys. I don't really care about them. Take a little, little heat. Probably faithfully mend here. Uh, actually, that's just otherworldly gaze. We can just uh, put a couple of lands in the bin. Maybe we put slowgurk in the in the bin too because we can. Rebirth and back. We have to board wipe. We'd yeah, yeah. Sure. I think we're just gonna bash here. Maybe bash here. <laughs> Gates of life. I can always rebirth that dude. Uh, refill my hand.
can't quite cast without, but we'll dump Oracle, I think, here. Maybe we just dump a Faithful Mending. Um, we'll play an Oracle. We're going to shuffle cards, I think. We're going to get Cosmic Rebirth. We're going to get uh, Confounding Riddle, Confounding Riddle. Um, and then... Do we just do nothing? We can bring back Slogurk. But we need more stuff in the yard, so... Uh, more lands in the yard, because we we were going to want to bring back uh, Argoth, so probably we do nothing here. We could play this, draw this card. Um, yeah, we'll dump the planes here, gain a little life. That's exactly where we need to be. Happy to let these oracles die. We can counter anything of consequence they might play like that. Um, I think we just let this happen. Rebirth back a slow gurk. Yeah, I know I'm playing slow, but what can you do? <laughs> just trying to play optimally. Sure, I had fun. My opponent probably didn't, but <clears throat> what can you do? We'll go one more. I think we're something like, I don't know. What, what is our record here? Have to let untapped.gg tell us. I've lost track. Either two and three or three and three. Two and three. All right. Uh, yeah, this is this is interesting. Red, we need revenge against red. Reinfo oh, okay, so we're back on Boros. Yeah, do I want a Faithful Mend here? Kind of do. Okay, so that's interesting. So Ottawara probably goes in the bin, and maybe... Oh, I don't want to put this in the bin, too. I hate doing Beseju as well. Maybe Aether Channeler. Because <clears throat> can, we can just rebirth it if we need to at instant speed. It's kind of a good thing to have rebirth. Um, so we're going to play... We're going to play this and then Titania. It will be really annoying, though, if, if they happen to, like... Well, I can't think of what this deck plays that would... We're totally not blocking if they just bash with everybody. Oh, what is this? In this case, I might block. Oh, well, <laughs> they're not attacking, so there you go. So here's Argoth. Uh, there are definitely circumstances that could allow us to get where we want to go next turn. Um, although I, I have a feeling what we really want is just a board wipe again. It's, it's very much, the, I mean, it is the same deck we played against a minute ago, aside from I don't know if they had a Baird, Argivian Recruiter. There's War Leader's Call. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing I can, well, I mean, I can just besage you it, which would make for like a nice... Well, I'll block one. Uh, maybe I don't even care about Besage doing it right now. Let's let's see what we hit here. Okay, so there's a deep hop. Um, there's a land in the bin. There's a land in the bin. 
But I think I want to keep um, Viseju for War Leader's Call. I just don't want to end up losing to that. Um, so we're going to dump these guys. And a little life. Viseju will end up hitting the bin anyway to this thing. Gain some more life. We have Cosmic Rebirth for Titania. I wonder if they have like a, a Convoke spell or something. Or they just didn't want to lose the Resolute Reinforcements or the Etching. I guess they're continuing to get soldiers off of that, so it's not the worst. Uh, do I board wipe here, or do I want to just keep letting them hang out? Because uh, I could Faithful Mend, dumping this Restless Vine stock, get everything back next turn. Um, or I could Depop and then Cosmic Rebirth. I'm gonna wait. I kinda think there's not much reason not to wait. Like, hopefully they just commit more stuff to the board. Uh, this is- this dude, dude like, flips over. Um, okay. Yeah. He's annoying, that's for sure. Some Convoke action. Please Convoke out a big dude that I can board wipe. Okay, so we'll faithful mending. Okay, we we'll probably just dump both of these because we'll get to play them both. We'll both come back. Get some life. So Titania, we got all these lands back. Unfortunately, uh, Titania is not going to be that big. Um. So they can just block. Kind of like what happened last game. <clears throat> and now we'd have to like refill the, the, the yard. But I think we're going to do this anyway. We'll just hope that our hand is better than their hand after. The blocks. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I I guess in this case I may consider like cosmic rebirthing just to bounce it to dude or something. I don't know. I don't know what our opponent's up to. So tokens in. Okay. I like the potential to, if they like, I don't know, go for some crazy, they're definitely getting board wiped the next turn. Um, in which case, yeah, okay, I'm not not bringing dude back in now. Um, I don't even know if I want to faithfully mend now. Hmm. Don't know how good Oracle of Tragedy is even after the fact. So maybe I do faithfully mend now. Okay, so we'll dump Oracle of Tragedy. And probably the oh, Rona or Slogurk here. I think I'd rather play Slogurk. Let's see, one, two, three, four, and then the Rona. I'd rather play Slogurk after, I think. I'm really not sure. Put Slogurk in the bin. Well, well that was nice because we drew one. So we're going to bash. Assuming a bunch of blockers, which is fine. Could be, oh, okay, no blockers. 
so we're gonna we're just gonna depop. They'll draw a card. We will not, alas. They'll get a dude from Sanguine Evangelist. But it's gotta be kinda hard for us to lose from this position. We can also let's see flash something back. Flash back a Malcolm. But uh I think the play is just let's just play a slow gurk. No, I, I held back Rona. Rona, Rona technically uh, maybe wins easier the next turn. But it's just a much bigger mana commitment. Okay, so they could get a little dude off of this if they bash with the the bivouac. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I'll just block the bivouac. Make dudes, it's fine. Okay. I uh, really just think the play here is fire up Restless Vine Stock and Bash. These guys both have Trample, I think. Um, and we can technically... Um, Cosmic Rebirth, if they happen to have any sort of pump action, it looks like they're dead on board otherwise, but if they did, we, we could Cosmic Rebirth uh, our bouncy dude and let the trample damage get through, so. Alright, yes, of course we had fun. But I, I, th I think we're <laughs> I think we're 3-3 three and three, an hour and a half into into this. I think we're going to let it ride at 3-3. Three and three. I, I like beating uh, War Leader's Call a couple of times. And we came really, really close to winning that first game, so I'll take it for the jankiest of all brews. Uh, take a look at the deck to see if there are any changes we'd make after that run. I don't think so. I think Malcolm was probably the least useful card in the deck. Um, and maybe I'd rather have something a little bit bigger, a little bit more exciting. Um, so... If I do a revisited, revised version of Bant Rebirth, I will likely consider cutting Malcolm for something a little bit bigger and more exciting. Everything else sort of did what it was supposed to. We didn't get to see a giant slow gurk. Maybe I'd consider cutting a slow gurk in that regard. It's just great at bringing back the, the Argoth lands. We need it um, by itself. If you just play it on turn three, sometimes it gets out of control. We didn't see that, but yeah, uh, maybe I'd cut one of those. I think Aether Channeler was pretty darn interesting in this deck. Um, still could argue that could be something different. But overall, I definitely had fun with it, and perhaps we'll revisit later. Thanks for watching. Oh, if you like this sort of thing, you know, like, subscribe.